Hey everyone, this is Grant. Today I want to show you a quick demo of our Instruct Lab project. And so at the end of the demo, you should have enough information to see how Instruct Lab can help you at your current job with your company or with your open source project. The first thing that we're going to do is actually serve the large language model. In this case, we're going to be using the open source Apache 2.0 licensed Granite model. So I'm going to just serve this model with the iLab command line and pass in the model path and point it to the model that I want to begin serving. And we're gonna be using the 7 billion parameter model and the quantized uh, version of that. You may not be familiar with quantized and what that actually means, but it's just a compressed model format. The way I like to think about it is, let's say you're out with your friends, uh, maybe you went to the beach for the weekend and one of you has a really nice Canon DSLR camera and you're taking a lot of pictures of your friends. When you get back home, your friends are gonna ask you to send them the pictures. Now, generally, you would never send them the raw image photos from your camera. You would want to send them a compressed version of that in JPEG or PNG format. Sure, it's not as high quality, um, and you wouldn't use it for like a print magazine ad. You would want to use the raw image for that. It's very similar when we're talking about large language models. You would want to use the quantized model, which I'm using now, on your laptop to test things out. It is a good enough quality for you to begin development with, but you probably would not serve the quantized model in production. You would want to use the full version, just like you would want to use the full raw image from your Canon camera in a print ad. So I am serving the quantized model. Let's go ahead and chat with the model. And I am going to run an iLab chat, pass in dash M and point it to that same granite model. This will allow us to um, have a chat interface to interact with the model via the server. So I can say hello and the model will respond and ask how it can assist me today. Very nice. So at this point, I can go ahead and use the Granite model to help me with my everyday tasks at my uh, job or in the open source project that I'm using. I wanna show you something kind of funny though, right? Uh, IBM and Red Hat released the Granite model. We also work on the Instruct Lab project but oddly enough, the Granite model does not know what the Instruct Lab project is yet because it hasn't been trained. In this demo, we're going to teach the Granite model what the Instruct Lab project is. So to illustrate this, let me ask it, what is the Instruct Lab project? And it is going to respond with a very confident answer um, that makes you believe it knows what the Instruct Lab project is. It is completely wrong. In the LLM space, we call this a hallucination to where the model will give you a very confident reply and you may believe that it's true when in fact it's not. And this brings up an important point. Any output you get from a model, you should always verify yourself. In this case, it says the Instruct Lab project is an educational initiative that le leverages virtual reality and augmented reality. 100% not accurate. Um, I don't know uh, where it got this information from or how it made it up, but let's correct this. So I'm going to exit from the chat and I want to show you what we call a taxonomy. A taxonomy is how you can actually train the model with your specific knowledge and skills. And taxonomy is a really fancy way of saying it's just a directory structure on the file system. So I want to show you the file that we're going to use to train the model and that will be in the taxonomy directory, and then in knowledge, and then in struct lab, overview, and then we have a Q&A file. Q&A stands for question and answer, and this is where the real power and the innovation behind instruct lab comes in. If we look at this file, you can see that it is just plain English text. So you do not have to have a, a team of data scientists or understand the in and outs of model weights and biases and, and all of these other things that you may not be familiar with in order to add your specific knowledge into your model. The format of this file is simply a question and answer pairing. So you can see first that I'm asking it, what is Instruct Lab? And then I give it an answer. I ask it another question, how do you get started with Instruct Lab? And then give it an answer. And generally you provide five or 10 examples of the question and answers that you want to begin to teach the model on. And at the bottom of this Q&A file, you can pass in additional backing data. In this case, it is the README file for the main Instruct Lab project itself on GitHub. 
Now, what happens and where the true magic comes in is I can then generate additional question and answer pairs. We call this synthetic data generation. We're going to use the large language model itself to take the question example, question and answer examples that I provided, plus that backing data, the README file, in order to create additional examples of that. And so you do that with iLab generate num instructions. And for this demo, I'm just going to generate 10 as an example. Generally, you would want to create uh, probably 100 instructions, but it really depends on the size of that backing data that I, I passed in. So let's go ahead and create uh, 10 additional examples. And this is where the real magic comes in. You will see the LLM and iLab, InstructLab, generate additional data points for us. And they'll begin scrolling on the screen. So we can see the first one is, what is the difference between InstructLab and other LLM libraries? And it does it pretty right. Um, it says InstructLab is unique in that it uses synthetic data-based model alignment, which is exactly what we're doing. So now we'll continue to, cre to create these synthetic data examples, which will give you a nice data set to then train the model. The use case for this at your company would be to train the model itself on your confidential and proprietary data for a specific use case that you want. It could be maybe you're creating a model for your customer uh, service representative. So you wanna train in all of your knowledge base articles on how you fix things in the past and then provide a chatbot interface to your customer service representatives where they can ask it a simple question and it will give them the result back. So the timing on this really is hardware dependent. I am doing all of this on my laptop today and to generate 10 samples takes about a minute or two. Um, if you're generating 100, it can take up to eight to 10 minutes. So just to give you an idea of time there. Okay, now that the synthetic data generation step has completed, the output of that will be a couple of things, right? It will be a JSON file of questions and answers that will be used to train the model. And it will also have another JSON file on questions and answers that the LLM threw out of the equation. That is where the critic model comes in. As we go through the synthetic data generation, we actually have a process in place called the critic model that will look for hallucinations in any of the generated output and throw those out so that they do not get trained. The great thing about InstructLab is you now have the ability to put human eyes on the synthetic data generation and give it one last check to make sure that all of the data is correct before we train our model. To train the model, once we have our synthetic data generation done, it's a really easy. You just type in iLab train, and this will take the synthetic data generation and begin to train the model with the new knowledge that we're adding for InstructLab or for the confidential knowledge that you're adding at your specific company. Now that the train is finished, we want to serve that new model again. So I am back on the terminal tab where I was serving the base granite model, and we want to stop serving that foundation model and serve the new one that we just trained. So I'm going to simply control C that, and that will stop the serving of that granite model. And then I can run the same command, iLab serve, passing in the new model that we just trained. And this is doing the same thing that we did before. It's just using this new model. Um, and we should be able to ask it what the InstructLab project is, and it should know the answer at this point. We simply open up a new chat session. We do that with iLab chat, pass in the model that we want to chat with. And at this point, we should be able to ask it, what is the Instruct Lab project? And it should have a better idea of what it is. And in this case, like this is pretty phenomenal. Look at the output. Instruct Lab is an open source community dr and driven initiative to build the next generation of generative AI models, blah, 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 blah. And so you can see how quick and easy it was for me to take a foundation model, in this case, Granite, add in my own knowledge and this is a really powerful use case for you to take advantage of in your open source projects or at your company to load in your proprietary and confidential data. Uh, it could be a knowledge base article, could be many knowledge base articles, whatever the case may be, for you to create a specific purpose-built model for your employees to be more effective in their job. Now, the model now knows about the Instruct Lab project. Um, but again, a model is not a search engine. I generally just wouldn't ask it, what is the InstructLab project? I would want it to take that knowledge and apply it to something to help me 
in my job or in my daily life. So let's pretend for a second that I am wanting to take some time away to learn more about the Instruct Lab project from my job, and I want to send an email to my boss. And I can have the uh, large language model assist me in that task. I can simply say, help me write an email to my boss, John, asking to spend a full day investigating the Instruct Lab, oh, let me spell it right, the Instruct Lab project, and highlight the benefits to our company from implementing the Instruct Lab project. And I simply pass that to the large language model and it is going to help me write this email and highlight all of the benefits that we could achieve from a company and the value we can receive from having our own purpose-built uh, large language model for our specific use case. So I hope as part of this demo, you saw the true power of Instruct Lab and how we are making training and doing model alignment accessible to everyone. You do not have to be deep into AI. You do not have to be a data scientist in order to take advantage of some of this great technologies for your specific use case. I hope you enjoyed this video. To learn more about the Instruct Lab project, go to github.com slash instructlab. Thank you.